Hi guys, it's Tamara Bennett from Southern Adornments Decor. I am back to do a quick little Facebook Live with you guys. I'm calling this Monday Mindset and Motivation. And tonight's topic is what is holding you back? Um, so I'm going to try to start doing these every Monday. I'm not going to promise that I'll do them every Monday because last week I was out of town and I forgot to record one for you all. But um, I'm just kind of plucking these topics out of thin air based on like what's on my mind. And I was thinking earlier about you guys when um, I was doing a photo shoot here in my craft room. And um, I know that sounds super fancy. And I did, it did make me feel super fancy. We had a professional photographer here with us this afternoon. And we took lots of fun photos together. And it made me feel so professional and special and fun. And I, it was just so awesome. Um, and so... I kind of was thinking about you guys when I was doing that photo shoot and I thought I hope that when I post these photos and use them in blog posts it doesn't make my normal followers and watchers feel like they're not doing enough I'm trying to think of how to put this like how to how to make it how it's how to make it sound the way I want it to sound when it comes out like I don't want you guys ever to think that you have to have a professional photographer come into your home and take photos of your door hangers or photos of you in order to be successful and in order to um, like grow your business because I've been doing this for five years and like five years and like five months. So about a year and about five and a half years. We'll just say that about five and a half years. And this is the very First time I've ever had a professional photographer come in my home and take pictures of me in my craft room. Um, I have always taken my own pictures, selfie style, or set up the self timer on the camera. And yes, that works for most of everything. But um, to the, I just wanted to spoil myself and kind of um, step it up a notch. You know what I mean? Like sometimes I feel like if I'm not personally challenging myself to step it up a notch, that um, I won't be growing. And so that's kind of what I wanted to talk to you guys about. Um, so I wanted to challenge you guys, what is holding you back? So I would love for you guys to just take a second right now and think to yourself, what do I feel like is holding me back? Um, is there something that you feel like you can't do um, in growing your business or learning to paint that is getting in your way? For example, it could be the fact that maybe you have little ones at home, little kids at home, and you're like, I can't start a business right now, Tamara. I've got little ones at home and they're always underfoot. And there's, um, you know, the only time I'm able to like get out of the house is while my husband's at home or, um, you know, maybe you're working another job. Maybe you've got like a regular nine to five job and you feel like you just don't have time at the end of the day. And so I want you to like think through your mind right now and figure out what is the, what are those mindset blocks for you? What is it? And I would love for you guys to comment and be vulnerable right now and share with me what are your mindset blocks? And maybe I will be able to speak to some of those. Okay, Zoe says time. She says she's way too busy. Um, so Zoe, what is it that you don't feel like you can accomplish because you don't have enough time? I would, I'd be curious to know. Is it the learning to paint or is it the growing your business part of it? Um... If it, it And for those of you who are maybe thinking about the thing that you have like little kids at home, I was thinking about you guys earlier today because we were talking and I, she, uh, the photographer asked me, she said, how long have you been painting? How long have you been doing this um, business? And I said, um, ever since I was eight months pregnant. And she said, you started a business when you were eight months pregnant? And I said, guilty. Yep. And I said, we needed money. And so I had a little bit of hustle in me, right? And so instead of going out and getting a regular job, I just started trying to book paint parties and doing whatever I could to get my business going. And I grew this business from the time that I had Charlie. I took like four weeks off right after I had the baby and then jumped right back into it. I took, um, but I was able to run my business and start all of this even while having Charlie at home and two little boys. But um, I was nursing Charlie in between paint parties and all of the things. So if I can do this, you can do this. It's just a matter of your mindset and how, and, and instead of saying, I can't, I need you to think of the word how, because when we use the word how, our brains suddenly start to try to think of solutions and they start working through the problem for you. It's not even that difficult sometimes. 
just reframing the question and saying, how can I make this happen? Poses a challenge to your brain and makes you start thinking through it. Okay, going back to the comments now. Um, Joey sa Zoe says, because she, I said Joey because she said job and job and Joey and job. Zoe says it's because she has a job. I understand. Um, so Zoe, if you have a hard time finding time because of a regular job, I totally get that. Um, I would just set yourself a goal to set aside, like, if you're wanting to do paint parties, maybe four hours each week to do one paint party. Um, or just two hours twice a week to paint door hangers or something like that. Just set yourself a goal. And I guarantee you, you're probably spending time doing other things that you don't even realize. Um, if you ever have taken that challenge where you're writing out exactly what you're doing every hour of the day, you would be shocked how much time you dedicate to other things and you don't even realize it. Like for me, my guilty pleasure is TikTok. I will scroll through the TikTok app for a good hour and not even realize that I blew that time. Or I'll watch Netflix. Or, um, I don't know, like I will um, waste time doing stuff that's really not going to grow my business. Um, for example, for years I cleaned my own house. And this is not knocking anyone who cleans your own house because some people... Um, actually enjoy that. I never did. And I, I am terrible at it. I can like uh, sweep the floors, do the dishes and the laundry. But as far as scrubbing showers and all of that, like I just felt like I always only hit the high spots. You know what I mean? I didn't get down. I was not a nitty gritty, deep cleaning kind of person. So it was worth it to me to pay someone else to come in and clean my home. And during those three hours while they're cleaning my home, guess what I'm doing? I'm not laying around watching Netflix. I'm in here painting and doing something that's going to make money that not only will pay the housekeeper, but will also pay the bills. Um, so if that is holding you back, see where you can carve out time because I guarantee you have more time than you think you do. You just may need to figure out uh, and prioritize a little better. Uh, Dana says, I've been selling door hangers for going on two years now and I struggle with the time to grow my business with my four and five-year-old boys. It's hard. Dana, I can totally relate to this. Um, I still struggle even now. Mine are now 13 and almost 10 and they still guilt trip me when I spend too much time here in my craft room or um, when I'm gone on a business trip like I was last week. And so finding that balance can be really difficult, but I really honestly think it's good. It's a good thing for us to show our kids that we want something. We want to like work for something and it's teaching them um, that we can do hard things and we can overcome challenges. And so um, I was notorious <laughs> for when I came home from my paint parties, counting out the cash from my paint party right there on the kitchen counter where everybody could see me. And more often than not, it was immediately as soon as I came in the door. And so the kids would come running in. They'd be like, Mom, Mom, you're home. And I'm like, hey, guys. And I would give them hugs. And then I'd be counting my cash. And they're like, oh, where did you get all that money? And I'm like, I did a paint party tonight. Like, I know it's called a party, but Mom made money. Like, they don't understand, right? They think paint party and they think Mom just went off to have fun. And so I wanted them to see the cold, hard cash and how much money I made. And it helped them understand that, hey, this is work. And mom is actually leaving and going and doing something that she really enjoys, but coming home and actually bringing home money, like physical money that they could see, right? Um, and so I think that really kind of ignited an entrepreneur spirit inside of them, or at least I hope it did. I hope it did. Um, let's see. You don't feel confident and you're terrible as a salesperson. Sherry, that is very common. So that, that is common for me also. I have a hard time selling. Um, matter of fact, I've been on this live for how many minutes now? 11 minutes. And the whole point of getting on here too was not only to share mindset and motivation with you guys, but to mention that we are doing a, this is like a commercial in the between the, the regular content. So just hold on for a second. Um, we're doing a free Facebook live webinar on Sunday night, the 22nd, 21st. Hang on. I forgot. Let me look at my calendar on next Sunday night. Yes. The 21st father's day that night at 8 PM, we are going to be doing a free webinar. So the webinar is going to be all about how to use Facebook live to sell your door hangers and Sherry 
confidence is one of the main things we're going to be talking about in that webinar. Not the main thing, but it's a very important part of that webinar. And um, what I will say is if you're not a confident salesperson, you need to focus on everybody else, not yourself. I want you to think about how you can serve others because through serving others, you'll end up selling to others and it, the sales will come really easy because for example, when I'm selling you guys painters clubhouse and I'm trying to get you to sign up, yes, I make money off of that, but I'm not thinking about all of the money I'm going to make off of that. When I'm talking about it, I'm thinking about how it's going to change your life. It's going to change Sherry's life. It's going to change Lila's life. It has changed Roxana's life. I see that she's watching here right now. She is a member of our Painters Clubhouse. I'm thinking about how I can serve those people in the highest way possible and how I can teach them how to paint. And if I teach them how to paint, that gives them confidence. And if they have the confidence, then they will start the business and then it will start to change their life because there are so many ways that painting can change your life. It can pull you out of depression. It can give you self-confidence and a purpose and it can help you make money for your household. And so don't worry about having to be a, a wonderful salesperson, Sherry. Just be a servant and figure out how you can serve people. And once you figure out how you can serve people, the confidence will come. Because I honestly believe with every fiber of my being that through serving others, we find true happiness. Um, and God really teaches us that. Like in the Bible, it talks all the time about being a servant and serving others. And so Jesus was the utmost servant. And by mimicking him and doing what he did and serving others, that's going to give us a, a greater reward than we, than we could ever get any other way. Um, Lila said no confidence. That's the same. Um, let's see. Laurel said fear of not being able to paint something that looks acceptable to my standards. Oh, Laurel. Sometimes done is better than perfect. Have you ever heard that before? Done is better than perfect. That means that... You could keep working on it, keep tweaking it, keep adding things, keep fixing and like tiddling with it and trying to like get it just perfect. But sometimes done is just better. And like that's just one of those things you're going to have to work on personally to like get over is to just um, like, for example, I painted this earlier today and I was like, after I did it, I was like, ah, I don't know if I like the purple in there. But now that I've let it sit here all afternoon and it's dry and I've had time away from it, I can now look at it and be like, I actually kind of like that. Like it's, it's growing on me now. And earlier, all of these tiny little green strokes, like see that one's not perfect. There's a few of them on here that I was like, eh, I did, this doesn't look so good. But now that I've had time to finish and step back and get some time away from it, I can look back at it now and be like, you know, I really like that. Um, so maybe just give yourself a break from whatever it is you're working on. <clears throat> okay, um, Ruth says pricing. She said, because people don't have a lot of money here in Southern Indiana. Ruth, I refuse to believe that um, you have nobody you can sell these to at a decent price in Southern Indiana. Because people here in Western Kentucky don't have a ton of money either. But you know what? I sell to people all over the United States and Canada. Um, if you are posting your designs in a business page online, it will reach far and wide away from Southern Indiana. So right now, Ruth, what I would probably guess is that you are probably trying to advertise and you're not probably not doing it intentionally, but you're probably trying to sell and advertise to the same um, group of people, possibly family members and friends, um, possibly the same people see your posts all the time. So you just need different eyes. You do need different people seeing your stuff. People who would look at that and be like, Look at that pineapple. That is the cutest pineapple I have ever seen in my entire life. And there's no way I could ever paint that. I got paint on my finger. Um, and that's what they're going to think. They're going to think this is a masterpiece. And there's no way they could ever paint one like yours. And you may look at it and just be like, it's just a teal pineapple with some messy purple, messy pink polka dots. And like, it's, it's, it's not that great. But, you know, um, people around here won't pay that much for it. Don't worry about the people around here. Worry about everybody else because somebody out there is going to think that is the bee's knees. Um, and so don't judge yourself so harshly. Don't underprice yourself. Just get, just charge what you would be excited to get for it. So um, 
let's say there's an there's one just like this um, on Etsy, and I'm just making this up. Let's say there's one just like there out there, just like this out there on Etsy that's selling for forty five dollars. This is not even a full size door hanger, but just go with it. On Etsy, it's selling for forty five dollars, and you think. I've never sold a door hanger for $45. There's no way I'd be able to get $45 for my door hanger. Um, but maybe you would be so excited if you got $30 for that door hanger because you haven't sold any door hangers before. Um, or maybe you've only sold one or two, but $30 would make you excited. List it for $30. And if you get that $30, you're going to be jumping for joy and you're going to feel like a success. And so eventually, if you get five more orders for these, then you can up your price to $35 or $40 and eventually $45. Those people on Etsy that are selling them for $45 more than likely have sold a bunch. And they're getting lots of orders and they have lots of high rating on, ratings on Etsy and they've built up a reputation over time. So just give yourself a little patience and work towards that. Um, Betty said, I don't feel like I'm good enough. Betty? I didn't feel like I was very good enough either when I first started and you know what gave me confidence to feel good enough the other people at the parties I went ahead and had like little parties in my home I started out having parties in my home with my friends and I would paint something and even if inside I was doubting it and I was thinking this isn't that good they would be like Tamara I love how you painted yours Oh my goodness, can you come help me and show me how you did the polka dots on yours? Because my polka dots never turn out good. And so I would gain confidence, just like I was saying earlier, through serving others and helping others. And I would go over and help them with their polka dots. And the more I helped others, the more confident I became. And the more um, parties I did, the more, com more compliments they would give me. And that built my confidence. And then eventually I started to see myself through their eyes and not my own judgmental eyes. So try getting in groups of people and teaching them and serving them and just facilitating. You don't even have to be teaching if you don't if you're not confident for that part yet. Just provide the playground. Give them the tools, give them the paints, the brushes, the blanks, and just say, We're all gonna paint together, guys. I'm not teaching this, but we're just gonna paint together. And through that, you will eventually get confident enough to possibly teach. And then stair step it up from there or baby steps. Um, you don't have enough talent. These are all very similar. A lot of you guys are lacking confidence. So I have given you guys advice about that, about, um, you know, serving others and that will lead to confidence. How to get my watching lives audience up. Samantha, um, there are different ways you can do that. I would definitely ask questions during the live to get people to engage because the more people comment and engage, the more Facebook will show it to other people because they will be like, hmm, this is kind of like getting some traction. People are commenting on this. This must be kind of popular. Let's show it to some more people and see what happens. When should a person make it a legit business when selling their door hangers? To how, do, how to do all the things. Cut the wood paint, take pictures, pose, learning new techniques. Um, Pamela, that's a great question. And we are going to be talking about things like that in our paint to profit membership that opens on June 22nd. So if you want to sign up for the webinar, um, after the webinar is over, you'll be invited to join paint to profit on June 22nd. Um, but we'll be talking about different topics, um, about posting on Facebook and um, maybe taking pictures of your door hangers. We'll be covering all kinds of different topics like that. But to answer your first question, when should a person make a legit business when selling door hangers? I would say pretty close to right away. Like within the first few months, if you feel, if you feel like you're going from just messing around to suddenly like you're having to get more organized, that's when you need to go and start getting a business license. Because if you're just selling more than one or two here and there, um, Uncle Sam's going to want his cut and you need to get legit and go get your, um, you know, your business license and all that kind of stuff in your EIN. But wait, and, uh, wait until that point when you feel like you're starting to take it just a little bit more seriously, um, where it's not just you messing around. Um, okay, Lori said, I work 68 hours a week between two jobs. I just don't have motivation at night to do anything. Oh, Lori, 68 hours a week would make anybody feel that way. So don't, don't feel bad about it. Um, I would say, above all, Find some time for self-care, like just, you know, 
just try to schedule it in however you can. Um, sometimes that looks like just going for a walk or a hot bubble bath. Or sometimes it looks like sitting down and painting just because you need to turn your brain off for a little while and enjoy something. Um, Amy said, I have given up television. I kind of got that way for a while, Amy. I got to where I wasn't watching TV because um, it was taking up too much of my time. Um, Debbie said, I can't focus. I've lost three family members and mom now dementia. I've had to get their rooms ready for sale response. Uh, Debbie, that is a difficult phase of life. And that's exactly what it is, is it's a phase of life. This too shall pass. Um, so just focus on the most important things right now, which is taking care of your mom and your family. And um, eventually, uh, you know, things will get easier. They will. It's just a very difficult phase of life right now. And my heart goes out to you because um, I've had to deal with some of that before and still dealing with a little bit of, of some of that right now. And it's difficult when family members start getting dementia because it, it feels like you're losing them. So uh, giving you virtual hugs. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Uh, Roxana said, I just hired a person to clean my house. I'm finally doing it. High five, girlfriend. She said, I have very little time with doing paint parties and taking orders and selling wood blanks, and I still struggle with time management. So, yeah, Roxana, hiring a housekeeper was the very first thing I did. Um, before I even hired anybody to help me with my business, I hired a housekeeper. And something about having those tasks taken off my shoulders made me feel lighter already. Just knowing that the showers were getting cleaned every two weeks and the toilet was getting scrubbed and the floors were being mopped. It was like a, it was almost like a physical burden off my shoulders because I knew I didn't have to worry about it. I wasn't carrying around that shawl of guilt the shame shawl. That's what we shall call it. I wasn't carrying around the shame shawl that I had not been cleaning my own floors and doing all of this. And a lot of times I would feel guilty for sitting down and painting a door hanger because I'm thinking, I don't remember the last time I cleaned the bathrooms or washed the sheets or all this stuff, you know, and it starts to eat away at you and you're in, it starts to make you feel bad about yourself over time. So if you can find somebody to clean your house, that will take a huge burden off. Um, and if you're struggling with time management, um, I would just, Roxana, try to batch things. So whatever it is you're doing, whether it's cutting door hangers or painting door hangers, try batching it so that you're not jumping from task to task. You're working really hard on one task for a chunk of the day. Um, Darla said, a full-time job, but taking care of a sibling with health problems at the moment. That sounds much like Debbie. It's a difficult phase of life right now. Okay. Um... Goodness, I think I'm so behind on comments. I'm just going to have to scroll back down the bottom. If I miss some of your comments, I promise I will go back and get them later. Um, somebody said, do you think it's necessary to buy the laser cutter when you start doing more door hangers? That's a decision I feel like everybody has to kind of make for their self. Um, I definitely feel like at some point, you may feel limited to what you can do with a jigsaw. And you may feel like, um, you're being held back because you are limited by technology. And so if you feel like if I just had a laser cutter, I could do this, 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 and this, and I could make this, this, this much more money, then that's when you need to go buy a laser cutter. Because if you have, if you think like of all the cash you could make once you buy that laser cutter and you feel like confident that you can really turn, um, that into profit, then you need to make a plan for that. So, um, before I bought my first CNC cutter, it was not a laser cutter, it was a CNC router cutter, I thought in my mind, okay, how many blank door hangers would I have to sell to pay this thing off? And I had it all in my mind, and I had a plan. And so, once you have a plan, then you can start working toward the goal of paying something like that off. And it, um, it makes it a little bit more manageable and a little less scary, because it's, it's not just hoping and praying you can pay it off, it's you've got a plan. And a plan is something you have a little bit more control over. Um, how solid you get started. How did I get started? Is that what you're asking? You're a new follower. Welcome, Robbie. Um, I got started because I was having uh, craft parties in my home. I call them Pinterest parties. And I invited friends and family over once a month. And I picked a different project every month. And we did a few door hangers. And, um, 
every time we did door hangers, they were a really great turnout and people loved those. And then when my husband came home from deployment, I stopped doing the in-home parties and started doing them in other people's homes. And so that really is what got my business started. And um, it was a slow start. The first six months were kind of slow, but then after that, it, it got to be fall. So if you're thinking about starting a party, I mean a party, if you're thinking about starting a business, now is the time because when fall comes around, you will be so busy, you won't even be able to sit down. <laughs> um, should you have a separate Facebook page when you aren't actually a legit biz yet? I think so. Yeah, even if, if it's something you're working towards, Amanda, go ahead and get it started. That way you can go ahead and start building that audience, even if you don't feel like you're legit yet. Um, but I think that's all I had to cover with you guys tonight. I just wanted to give you some encouragement. And if you're feeling like something's holding you back, figure out what that is. And instead of sitting there and saying, I can't, start asking yourself, how can I? And if it's a laser cutter you want to buy, say, how can I afford this? How can I pay it off quickly? If it is working with small children in the home, say, how can I work around the kids schedule or how can I find some extra help for somebody to watch the kids while I do a paint party. I hope you guys found some encouragement in this and a swift little cook, kick, <laughs> a swift little kick in the booty, if you will, because um, sometimes that's what we need to really like get past those mental blocks where we feel stuck. And so I hope you guys found some motivation and um, encouragement. I hope you have a great night. I'll be painting live here tomorrow night. And um, it'll probably be around 7 p.m. Is that right? 7 p.m.? No. I don't know. I'll make an announcement tomorrow because I just remembered I have a Zoom paint party with my clubhouse, I think, tomorrow. So, I don't know. I'll let you know. Bye, y'all.